Hey everybody, Mr. Kowalczuk here. So we're gonna roll ahead with 4.7 today. We got medians, altitudes, and perpendicular bisectors. I know that some of us are not totally down with J.K. Rowling's uh, politics, but I think that the Deathly Hallows is a representation of Harry Potter. And personally, when an author puts their work out into the world, I don't think it becomes theirs anymore. I think it becomes ours because we get to interpret it in our own way. So as we go through the lesson, hopefully you'll understand why the Deathly Hallows, which is what the symbol is, if you haven't read Harry Potter, um, it relates to medians, altitudes, and perpendicular bisectors. All right, let's get going. So first off, as you probably took notes on, we got medians of a triangle. Uh, a median, and I just will start out by saying all three of these terms you're going to be responsible for. So again, you've got some good time to practice and memorize over the course of uh, the week before the test. So make sure that you are doing that in order to um, memorize all the terms because they're all going to be on the test and you're going to be responsible for knowing them. So median of a triangle intersects a vertex and the midpoint of a side. Um, so we got a line segment array being the median is um, if and only if it intersects the vertex and the midpoint of the opposite side. So let's take a look at what that looks like with triangle ABC here. If we go from point A, so that's our vertex right there, and the midpoint of the opposite side, all right? So it's gonna split this into two equal points. Or it's got segments, pardon me. Um, we have, in this triangle, we have three different medians. So we can go from B all the way down here to the middle of A, C. And then we can also go from C all the way across to the midpoint of A, B. And I didn't draw that line accurately. In fact, all of the medians do intersect at the same point, okay? All right, so that's gonna be our median of a triangle. Next, altitude of a triangle. Now altitude is different because what it does is it's a line segment or ray um, that is, it intersects the vertex. So it starts from one of those points and it is perpendicular to the side opposite that vertex. So here we have our first example of what that could look like. So I'm gonna draw them in each of these because it's important to recognize that they can look different in acute right and obtuse triangles. So acute is pretty much the, um, what you would expect. They come straight down and form a right angle. Now, don't assume in this situation that just because it looks like it's in the middle that these two sides are congruent because we, we don't know that until we prove it. Same thing over here. We go this way and we get an altitude like that. Again, we might not know if they're congruent. <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily split it. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. And our third goes across and makes a right angle there. Okay. So that's going to be the altitude of those triangles. Um, the altitudes also, since I didn't draw this correctly, um, the altitudes uh, in an acute triangle in this instance will intersect at the same point. Now a right triangle, this is gonna be a different situation because we already have that right angle. Well, let's think about this vertex here. How do we draw a line from this vertex to make a right angle with this if this is already a right angle? Well, the altitude just goes straight down the side of the triangle. So that's all it is right there. The same thing is gonna be true on this side. So it's gonna go straight across and it's gonna make that right angle again. So altitudes in a right triangle are each side of them. And then the third altitude is gonna go from this vertex across and make a right angle here, okay? So just notice where they are and how they line up and arrange themselves in a right triangle. Now in an obtuse triangle, we need to do something a little bit different. So first off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the one that's most obvious. Comes straight across to the longest side and makes that right angle, yeah? So that one makes the most sense. However, if we go from this vertex, what we're gonna do is we need to continue these sides here. And then we need to continue the other side here. Right there. And the reason for that is that this altitude is gonna make a right angle from this point. And we have to imagine we can't draw an angle over here that's gonna make a right angle. So what we need to do is we need to draw our altitude outside of the triangle 
And that's totally okay. It doesn't have to be inside the triangle in order to be an altitude. And then our third one from this vertex here does the same thing. It comes over this way and creates that right angle with the imagined extension of the side of the triangle, okay? So some special circumstances with right and obtuse triangles where those altitudes might be. Okay, perpendicular bisector. Same thing, a line, ray, or segment is a perpendicular bisector if and only if is perpendicular to a segment and divides the segment into two congruent segments. So there's a lot here, let's break it down. The perpendicular bisector is really important because the title tells us exactly what it is. Perpendicular, right? It's perpendicular to a segment and it bisects. So it's gonna split, divides the segment into two equal segments. So we've got our two equal segments here and here, and we have our perpendicular right here. So perpendicular bisector is a helpful name. It sounds like it's a, it's a mouthful, but the name of it is actually gonna help us understand what that is, okay? Now, um, we've got, from there, we can get the perpendicular bisector theorem and it's converse. It's a biconditional, which means the converse is, is gonna go both ways and be true. First off, it tells us the point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment. If and only if, the point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So here we have this thing here, this diagram, and here we have this diagram here. Well, how do we get from here to here? What that means basically is that the point is on the perpendicular bisector. So D is the point in question here. That's the point that we're talking about here. It's the perpendicular bisector. We can tell that because in the diagram it's perpendicular and it bisects AB. So this ray CD is our perpendicular bisector. Point D is on the perpendicular bisector, if and only if the point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So if we draw some segments that go from D and then to B and A, if we can prove that these two segments are congruent, then we know that this is in fact a perpendicular bisector and that point D is on that perpendicular bisector. It also goes the other way, right? If the point here is equidistant from B and A, then we know that this is a perpendicular bisector. So if this was the situation that we started with and we had an, basically an isosceles triangle, then we would know that whatever this comes through right here is both going to be perpendicular and it's going to split AB in half. So it goes both ways, the perpendicular bisector theorem does. Okay, so now we're talking about means, altitudes, and perpendicular bisectors. So the green line, um, that should be green right here, this one, which in the, in the um, Harry Potter universe is actually the wand. I'm not gonna do anything and tell you anything else if you haven't read it yet, no spoilers. Um, green line of the median or the altitude of the triangle. Well, we know median comes across and it intersects the midpoint of the opposite side. And we see the two tick marks here. So that tells us that it is in fact the median. And then the altitude comes from one vertex and makes a right angle. Well, this does the same thing. So it's actually both. Is the green line the perpendicular bisector of the base? Well, it's perpendicular and it bisects the base. So, yep. What kind of triangle is this and how can you justify that? Great question, great question. So from this, what we can say is it's an isosceles. Uh, oh, that's supposed to be an I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S <laughs> -E um, triangle, okay? And how can we use that? Well, we can use the perpendicular bisector here. Right, which tells us that if we have a perpendicular bisector, that these other sides, let me use a different color here, that these other sides of the triangle are equidistant from the endpoints. So that means that this and this are gonna be congruent, making it an isosceles triangle. 
this example here is another example of this kind of situation right here. Okay. Um, in this example, we have B is equal distant from A and C and D is equal distant from A and C. So that tells me that this is congruent to this and D is equal distant from A and C also. These are congruent to those. Prove that BD is the perpendicular bisector of AC. So now this one seems pretty straightforward because when I look at it, what I know on my givens, Then after that, I know that B is on the perpendicular bisector of AC. And I also know that D is on the perpendicular bisector of AC. And why do I know that? Because of the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. So that tells me that these are perpendicular and that this is bisector. Three, BD is the perpendicular bisector of AC. And what's the reason for that? The line postulate. Because if B, D, B and D are both on the perpendicular bisector, then the perpendicular bisector has to be B, D because the line postulate says there's only one line that can exist between two points, which in this case is the perpendicular bisector. The distance from a point to a line or a plane, yeah, is defined to be the length of the perpendicular segment from the point to the line or that plane. In this case, we have our point here and our line here. The distance from a point to a line, that's going to be the perpendicular distance, which will be the shortest distance from the point to the line. Um, we've got now two more theorems and then we're done. We'll, we'll just talk through these and then you can work on your practice problems. This is the angle bisector theorem number two and it's converse. A little bit of a clunky name, but hopefully we can work with it. Angle bisector theorem number two. Okay. A point is on the bisector of an angle right there, point P if the point is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So before we talked about the distance from a point to a line is the perpendicular. So if we take this point and we make it, and we, we find out what the distance is and it's perpendicular, if those distances are congruent to each other, then we know that it's on the perpendicular bisector. Excuse me, it's on the angle bisector. How is it different? Well, what this tells us is that it bisects the angle. It tells us that this, this um, ray here with point P on it is on the angle bisector. This, the angle bisector theorem, tells us that each of these angles, XBC and ABX, is one half of angle ABC. So this tells us we've got one half of the total. This tells us that we are just on the angle bisector. That's the difference between these two. 
we'll play with those today and the practice problems. Okay, that's all I got for you. I uh, will see you in class next time. Adios, everybody.